Hello and good evening everyone. My name is Adam Van Ord and you are watching live at 945 hosted by me, Adam Van Ord from Van Ord Customs. Uh, took a break last week. It was a much needed break. I've been doing this every week for quite some time and to step back and take a week off was a good thing and we are hitting it hard this, this week with um, uh, another amazing guest uh, that we're going to talk to tonight and find out all kinds of cool information. Um, you may know him as the guy behind Exclusive RC, Mr. Brian Almeida. I probably said your name wrong, Brian, and if I did, I apologize. You can correct me when you get in here. Um, however, uh, Brian is more than just what you know from Exclusive RC, and if you haven't checked out any of his uh, scale work, his custom stuff, then you are 100% missing out, and I'm hoping to show a little bit of that tonight, and we'll talk about Exclusive RC and all their goodies that they have going on, but... Um, that's what I'm after and I hope I hope we can show you that uh, as for future stuff that I have coming up I'm really not uh, locked down into anything as of quite yet to be completely honest with you guys I legit took the week off and didn't do anything live at 945 and so with not taking with not doing anything live at 945 I kind of um, didn't follow up on any of my leads or any of that stuff. So I will have someone next week. I'm sure of it. Uh, if you have people you think need to be on, so on and so forth, uh, please feel free to um, comment their names or, you know, just shoot me a message because uh, my whole goal here is to highlight other people who are doing cool stuff in the RC community. And so let me just talk briefly about the show before I... Uh, thank you, Brian, for ha being happy to be here. So let me talk to you just briefly about the show um, before I bring Brian in and we fire up the interview and go from there. So this is a live interview series where I've interviewed all kinds of different people um, inside of our scale crawling community. If you haven't checked out any of my videos, you can find them over on YouTube under Van Org Customs. They are all uploaded over there. Every single one that I've done so far... Um, is uploaded and easy to find at Van Org Customs. In fact, there's a whole playlist of them. Um, you can also find the other stuff I do on uh, social media at Van Org Customs um, on Instagram. You can find me on Facebook for Van Org Customs. I have a business page. Um, but additionally, one of the things that I want to point out as new people are coming in and so on and so forth is this, that this is kind of a self-policed community while we do this show, and I just ask for your respect, and I ask that you kind of keep things PG in the comments. That's what I'm looking for. Um, aside from that, if you have any questions you would like to ask, I will try and skirt them in there and uh, get them to Brian as well while I do my interview. But um, as far as referencing each and every comment, we're just, it, we just don't have time for that if we're ever going to get through the interview. So um, if we miss your comments or something, I always go back through and answer everything I can, and I'm sure every guest I've had has been willing to do that as well. So I'm sure Brian will do the same. So without further ado, I'm going to bring Brian on camera and we're going to get this get this thing fired up and start those questions coming at him. Uh, see if we can't put him on the spot just a little bit. So bringing him on. All right, and I'm sure that my volume is wrong, so I'll probably have to jump over there and fix that. Hey, what's up? Nothing. How are you? I am uh, as good as one can be after going through stressful nails through the foot and wood all over and inhaling uh, heat rock. You know, that's always fun. Yeah. So uh, uh, for people who don't know, you're in the middle of a renovation right now. Like pretty expensive. Yes. Yeah. Um, basically, we had to expand. We're up to 20 printers right now. And by the end of the year, I'll probably be up to 30. Um, so I needed the space. Um, I needed to break the garage down and make it a lot bigger. Um, I'm currently in my laundry room um, nice. with my little backdrop of stuff. And, um, you know, it's closer to the Wi-Fi, so it'll work out. But, yes, I plan on having the shop done in about two weeks. I'll have a little grand opening for people in the area that want to come through, check it out. Um, I'll go live, of course, and talk about it. Um, but, yeah, uh, we're going through some renovations right now, and it's pretty hectic when you're dealing with all kinds of just chaos. Yeah, I hear you. I totally don't envy that at all. I have a hard enough time keeping my life in order, and I'm not renovating anything. So, um, yeah, so that's where it's at. Uh, let's fire this up with, tell us a little bit about yourself, a little backstory, if whatever have you there. So, um, I am a uh, college graduate with a ba uh, bachelor's in illustration. Uh, I've been pretty much drawing and creating all my life. 
Um, that's kind of when I grew up and decided that I kind of needed to do something. And at the time, it was like important to have the education. And I wanted to be the first in my family to have a college education. So I did that. Um, I've also been tattooing for a little over 10 years now. Um, I very proficient in uh, mixed martial arts. Before this, I was actually going to do uh, UFC professionally until I got injured. And then uh, RC kind of became my go-to thing to stress out, you know, get the stress out, do my whole little Zen thing. And um, and now this is what I do full time, thankfully. That's awesome. So I think I think a lot of people kind of find RC in that whole relieving the stress piece because that's definitely what it does for me. If I have time to yes. wrench or go drive, like it kind of like melts the rest of the other stuff that goes on. So it's good. Yep. All right. So how long have you been in the hobby? Whew. I've been in the hobby for on and off for a good 10, 15 years, give or take. I didn't really start pushing it heavy, heavy until the last five or six. Um, and then started the business uh, four years ago, exactly on October 15th. So we're a little under a month away. Um, and uh, yeah, I've been on and off. And this this isn't my only hobby, which is the killer part. So um, yeah, I've been kind of on and off on the RC thing for like 10, 15 years. All right. Do you know what like sparked it first? Like what was that first thing that really got you in there? Um, honestly, it was being a young kid that, you know, I, I didn't grow up rich. Uh, my parents, you know, that, you know, lived a regular life. It was kind of like going to Toys R Us and like, oh, I think that's cool, mom, I want it. And mom would be like, we'll get it for you next time. And even though subconsciously I knew next time wasn't going to come, just the fact that she said that was like, okay, cool, mom, we'll wait till next time. And I saw a guy, older gentleman, maybe in his 40s at the time, little gas car, wing, wing, yeah. down the street. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's so cool. And now I hate gas and nitro completely. Like, I hate it. But that's what, like, got the spark ignited where I'm like, oh, I need to have one because they're just so badass. They're super cool. Yeah, no, like, I, I think the Nitro thing was what kind of sparked me, too. My cousin had one ripping up and down the street. Sounded cool, looked cool. Uh, the reality of it is there's way too much maintenance in that for me. So. Um, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So what was your first hobby-grade RC car that you ended up with, or RC truck, whatever it was? Traxxas Stampede. Nice. It's a great Stampede. Car. I love the truck, but then, you know, I wanted bigger, you know, so I started doing a lot of research and then I found out about a company called Fast Lane Machines. They still exist. They make some awesome uh, aluminum hop up parts and they made this whole conversion to turn it into an eight scale monster truck. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be awesome. <laughs> this was before I understood that bashing things should be plastic for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. First jump. I bent like everything on that truck. It was bad. I was like, oh man, this sucks. I spent like $800 and yeah, and it stuck with me for a long time. I ended up fixing it up and I sold it for a really good price. And, uh, but that was my, uh, that was the one that started me. And if I had to pick one that I liked the most that I started with after that, I would say it was my Slash. I really love that platform. Yeah, it's super fun, um, and it's it's a great start. Both of those are honestly great starters. Um, props to Traxxas for having like an easy way into the hobby, because uh, once yep. you're once you have that controller in your hand and you're hooked, like, man, you it's so easy to shift one one direction or the other. But um, it, just having that easy like entry level thing is is amazing. Uh, if you weren't in RC, what do you think your hobby of choice would be? Well. Considering I have multiple hobbies now, I got to say, if I had to pick one, um, and just to let everybody know, I'm in slot cars. I love slot cars, um, mainly because of the scenery. Um, I love slot cars. Uh, I do airsoft. Um, but what kind of holds a special place in my heart, and it started as a child because my father bought me my first set when I was three or four. Okay. But it was one of those where it was like, look what I got you, but you can't play with it because you're going to mess it up. I'll give it to you in a few years, you know. Um, and I returned the favor like three Father's Days ago, and I bought him a set. <laughs> and it was uh, my HO scale Lionel trains. I love trains. 
So, like, if I had to pick another hobby to just stick with that one, it would probably be trains. Yeah. Do you have, like, a big train setup, or are you kind of, like, got it scaled down so, type of deal? So, I had taken over my mother's basement at the time, and I had, like, a 20-foot by 6-foot display with, you know, working waterfall, and, like, it was a super cool little, like, setup, and she kind of was like, are you ever going to finish it? Are you ever going to finish it? And I knew I wasn't going to finish it. So I'm like, mom, Merry Christmas. I'm going to take it out. You could have your living room back. <laughs> I'm sure she appreciated that. <laughs> yeah. So now I got like $5,000 worth of HO trains and stuff in plastic bins in a garage. Yeah. that I mean, that makes total, total sense. We'll just store them. Yeah. Uh, so are you a big tire guy or a small tire guy? Got to ask. So... Tiny tire makes a better driver. That's how I feel. I love the tiny tires. I love them so much, though, so, that I had a big conversation with uh, the big man up at Pitbull. Um, do a lot of engineering work for him. And uh, I said, hey, it would be really cool if we released a certain tire that's sitting right there in a 155. And uh, he was like, you know what? Let's do it. So everyone's hearing it first. First bomb drop in about three weeks to a month. The 155 Pitbull XOR. Nice. Will be coming to market. You've seen it here first. <laughs> awesome, man. You said you had news and you were going to surprise me. I did. I figured you were going to do it toward the end. You got me now. It's all good. Oh, it, it's coming. Oh. It's coming. <laughs> All right. Well, now I'm excited. So let's see what else we got. Uh, brush to brushless fit. Both. Okay. So brushless, censored, castle all the way. Kate at castle, she's like awesome. Super cool down to earth to deal with. If she don't know the answer, she'll make sure she gets you the answer right away. Brushless censored all the way for my crawlers, especially because I like to put a lot of stuff in my crawlers. They tend to have 9 to 15 pounds sometimes, like this behemoth. Yeah. Um, but brushed for my construction equipment. 14 scale brushed with a one, uh, 4 to 1 gear reduction. Greatest combo ever. Brushless is a bit overkill for the, for the uh, semi-truck stuff. <laughs> That's fair. I, I get it completely. Um, what is your favorite thing about RC in general, the whole RC hobby? This, being able to talk to people, to communicate. I find myself wanting to go to events and run, and I end up not running because I spend more time just talking to people and hearing about their stories or them showing me how they use, um, you know, my accessories or just how they make their own stuff. Like, I just like interacting and, and getting other people's perspective because, it helps center myself and it helps me give a better product or make a better product because I get to hear people's input, you know, like I love the fact that people will approach me and talk to me because, you know, Hey, I'm human. I'm totally approachable. Um, so I love communicating. I love meeting new people. I mean, ultimately when you run a business, you know, your number one goal isn't, Hey, I'm going to make a million friends. But if you make friends, it's, it's a total, like, uh, it's an extra, you know? Right. I, I'd say that's one of my favorite parts about um, like like the secret guilty pleasures of doing this show is that I get to talk to all of you guys and then I've grown like all the people in the community and then um, as a side of that people now come up to me at like events and, and speak to me and and I love that like I'm finding so much more joy in going to events and talking to people that the, the running of the trucks has become like second to that and honestly I never thought it would get there I am like stupid competitive. And I, I've yeah. backed up off of that so much over the last year. Yep. All right. Um, so What's up, Tony? Let's talk about next question on my list here. And it's, uh, are you, do you compete in scale comps? And if so, like, what one is your favorite one? Like, what's your pick? So, shameless plug, uh, my favorite comp is Nest, the one that me and Desmond put on together. Um I really do enjoy East Essie. Um, I'm not a huge fan, though, of Sorka-based comps, only because 
The same way I like to be super scale, I like to be super realistic. And when you're in a class, let's say, for example, a class zero or class one, because it's more of your daily driver that you take off road, but you got to drive back home to mom in. If you get stuck in a spot, for example, you're going to need to reverse because you're not going to drive off a cliff and kill yourself. So I feel like that should translate into RC. And when there's all those you can't back up rules or how I feel like you get points for having recovery equipment, but if you use it, they take them away. Kind of doesn't sit right with me. So I do comp here and there. I love K&K's comp. Um, that's a super awesome uh, comp that I, I couldn't make it this year, unfortunately, but I've been there every year since, and I plan on going this year coming up. Um, yeah, I mean, I definitely compete. I'm a very competitive person, obviously, coming from a fighting background and just yeah. doing competitive racing and stuff like that. Um, but anything that's circa related, I'm just not a big fan of because I feel like there's just too many extra rules, you know, that kind of takes the fun away. I got gotcha. you. Um, I, I understand that completely, and, and I'm a huge comp fan, like, I love all the stuff, and I actually, like, I've tried the whole no reverse thing, and, man, there's something about the technicality that you have to put in there to not back your truck up that I absolutely it's true. love. But I, I understand, like, all the aspects of it, but uh, I, I just like the technical aspect. Um, that's just where I'm at. So let's, let's shift things just a little bit and talk about a little bit about exclusive RC and what's going on there. So how did all of that start? How did it begin? So, it actually, a big part of it was due to my fiance. Um, the reason being is because I was tattooing. Um, I was, I, I actually had an automotive shop that I've had for a good eight years prior where I did the same thing I'm doing now in RC. I did it in full scale, uh, custom builds, motors, bikes, paint jobs, fiberglass, carbon fiber, all that good stuff. Um, but it was starting to slow down at the time. You know, I call it people having caviar taste with Pizza Hut money, you know. So it, it was one of those things that I'm breaking my back. I'm killing myself. And, you know, I, I sat home and I literally said, I really want to just make a scale toolbox. And I literally took styrene. I made a scale little snap-on toolbox. And I posted it on Facebook. I just said, hey, guys, look at this snap-on toolbox I made. And I got a flood of... Is it for sale? How much? And I'm like, no, no. And then it's like, okay, 20 bucks. Uh, okay, I want three. And I'm like, oh, uh, 40 bucks. Uh, 60, 80. And I'm like, wait, I think I can make some money. So I started making a few different few boxes, but then I realized like, man, it's taking me like six hours to start and finish this thing. Perfect paint, the whole nine. Um, I got to find either somebody I can teach or, or some way to produce this faster um, with the quality. And then I, 3D print just fell in and I'm like, so if it takes six hours to print the toolbox, I can technically be doing something else for six hours. So it's like having two of me. This might actually work. And then right. she told me, she says, you got to pick one. You can't put 100% into this and 100% into that and the other thing. Pick one thing. Make a website, make it legit, put your all into it, and just see where it takes you. And I said, all right, I'm closing up the shop, and uh, I'm going to start doing this RC scale stuff because I love it. I, I'm, um, I'm scale from way back when with the HO stuff and sceneries and stuff, and I, I just wanted to implement it into a bigger functional scale. Gotcha. Makes sense to me. Uh, that's awesome. Sorry. I, like, got distracted for a second. Uh, <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> what is your favorite part? So uh, when you run the RC business stuff, obviously you have a favorite part and a least favorite part. So what what would the favorite part of it be? And then what's the part that's, like, difficult or that you just, like, you're like, oh, man, I have to do that. So. Okay. So my favorite part is honestly seeing my customers take my product and make it their own or make it better or modify it or just implement it into their build where I'm like, that's super awesome. I mean, there's guys out there that are buying, you know, like my motors and they're weathering them, they're modifying them, doing all this stuff to it. And I'm like, wow, like they just took it up a whole nother notch, you know, or like they take yeah. these rigs that 
are super awesome. Like like Scott when he does his awesome custom builds, and then he throws in like my seat, my tack, uh, just accessories that throw it over the top. And it's like I I'm so humbled and proud to be part of this build or these builds because these guys are doing these phenomenal jobs that's my favorite part is like seeing it's kind of like seeing your kid grow up um my worst part aside from paperwork because that's always the worst is that oh yeah just general generalizing it is unfortunately you can't please everyone no matter how hard you try and like, I got to tell you, I'm a people pleaser. If something goes wrong, I'm the first one to try to fix it, um, take care of whatever the issue is. But sometimes you just can't please everybody no matter how hard you try, and that part is very frustrating. Dude, I totally get it, uh, without a doubt. Um, pleasing everybody is difficult in general. Uh, so uh, a lot of people either do or do not know that I'm a teacher, and so I spend my entire day trying to please everybody I come in contact with. And uh, you're right. You can't please everybody. And, and that definitely puts a drain on some of the stuff, especially when, when you try really hard to do that all the time. Um, and yeah, so I feel like a lot of people recognize you from the 3D printing side of what's going on. But um, one of the things that I was lucky enough to explore at East Coast was like your custom scale building of uh, all the all the intricate stuff that you do for yourself or for other customers as well. Like sometimes you'll do builds for them. Uh, do you have anything kicking around that you can show off to kind of highlight that and what's going on there? So, yes, I got two things. One, actually, which is also, I guess it's still in the RC hobby, but it's also something else I do. They got those 1 16th scale tanks, the ones that shoot the BBs. So, like, yeah, I had this... I had this whole, like, I want to get tanks, and I want to get, like, those really super detailed, like, they're not G.I. Joes, but they're military accurate figures from, like, World War II and stuff like that. I want to get those, yeah. and I want to build, like, a town and some scenery, and then I want to, like, do two versus two or one versus one, and, like, the last person to knock down the other guy's figures wins, and we call it Tank Wars. So, Sounds I literally... <laughs> I literally went and got foam from Home Depot and I took that green pinkish kind of foam and I made this out of it. Sweet. So, so like, it's basically like a beat up building, you know, with the shrubbery, bullet holes, the whole nine, you know, that's the front side. That's the back side. Awesome. You know, so basically, we set these things up, and this is one of multiple buildings. We set this up, and we pretty much get uh, put the figures on there, and then you're driving your little tank around, and you're uh, trying to shoot the guy's figures off. So that's yep. one little thing I do a lot of custom work for, and, and that stems from the HO scenery and just scenery in general. Um, and then I think my, my coup de grace, as they say, or my favorite build of – that I put together is yeah. one of two. And she's pretty heavy. We call her Big Bertha. And this is my Caterpillar 773G, which has a 3D printed me inside. Yeah. It has the actual scale motor that houses the electronic motor. It's all metal construction, metal, styrene, obviously some 3D printing, all custom. Yeah. This thing gets used. It weighs about 42 pounds. So that was a little workout. And um, there's. it took me 477 hours to build that one. The second one, which is the same thing in white, took me 377 hours to build. So I knocked 100 hours off from figuring things out and whatnot. Um, right. It's able to haul a payload of 65 pounds, and it's able to pull 220 pounds. Yeah, so I got to check that out in person at East Coast, um, and so much so that I even brought my, my little guy back, and you were super accommodating. You let him, like, you showed him the whole 
everything with it. You drove it around, dumped it, all that stuff. It was awesome, man. Um, the, the detail in that is incredible. It's very well done. And uh, my son was absolutely blown away. And seriously, thank you for taking the time to, like, hang out and uh, chat him up and talk to him about all the stuff and, and show him all of how it all worked. And tour and, I mean, it was good. He loved it. So... Um, absolutely he might be the next guy that. doing this custom was, stuff you know that was on my list i was like yeah <laughs> um so i have to ask when you go to do something like that and um and you say this is one of two do you market like building custom or is it kind of like you've built stuff and then people have been like hey you have this they're seeking you out or how does that work so I normally build them and then I'll put them on my site for a price and say, you know, it's X amount of time turnaround and here you go. But after putting so much work and effort into these things, now that I'm kind of established and people have seen my work, the way I do it is I make an announcement and say, I'm going to build this model and I'm only building 10 of them or five yeah. of them. So it's kind of like first come, first serve, and I do them, you know, all in one shot together, and then I'm done. I won't do it again because this isn't one of those things that you want to keep doing, especially when you're doing it by hand because it does get a little frustrating and repetitive after a while, and you kind of get burned out from putting in all that effort and work. So I like to do limited run of things, but I do advertise custom builds. You know, people contact me all the time and say, hey – I have this truck in real life. Can you replicate it with all these features? How much? And, you know, that's kind of where the business started for me was the 14 scale stuff, building semi trucks for people. That's that's what really pushed, you know, my start to this whole thing. Right. Um, and so I got to check out a cool semi at East Coast that was awesome as well. Uh, but I have to pause for a second and, and make a statement to people. So what's going on right now is that um, – we're freezing off and on. And so what happens is, um, unfortunately, when you guys give all of the love and you hit the like button, the smiley faces, all of that stuff, um, we definitely end up freezing. And Facebook, for some reason, hasn't fixed that problem with what's going on. Uh, but you can comment until the sun goes down and Facebook doesn't get all freeze frozen up with that. Uh, so... I hate to say it, but would you refrain from hitting the like button? Like, it sounds so weird to say, but um, that's kind of where it's at, guys. I, I apologize. And and now the like button's happening. You, you would think that Facebook would have fixed that by now, now right? I, you know, and so, like, the way the algorithm works, if anybody's looked into Facebook, is they promote they promote your stuff based on how many, like, likes and stuff go on. It doesn't have anything to do with the comments. But if you hit the like button too many times, it, like, boots you out. I don't get it. Yeah. So, um, all right. So when, when you're telling me you're putting 470 hours on a build and all this custom time figuring things out, um, how do you come up with a price that you would charge for some kind of custom build like that? Um, I, are you just throwing numbers out there or do you have kind of breakdown system of how you go about doing that? so market value and the way to explain that is unfortunately um well fortunately there's x amount of us that can do the type of work that i do um so it's kind of a specialty um type of work so it's kind of hard to say well what am i worth am i the ten dollars an hour am i a minimum wage guy am i you know, like a surgeon, am I making $70 an hour? Like what's too much, but it's market value because I'm going to go, for example, this 773G, I sold the white one to a gentleman in Germany and I sold it to him for $7,700. Um, right now there's another company in Germany. I forget the name that makes a similar truck like this one but it's generic it's not really a cat it's not really you know anything it's just a, a mining truck and it sells for about 45 to 5,000 euro which equates to almost six thousand dollars right so my way of thinking about it was well i have x amount in material because you still need a sound unit you still need rims and tires you still need um motor esc etc 
all the materials, and and then you just factor in basically. All right, well, if a, if a generic one sells for about six, well, I'm going to build one that's going to take me X amount of hours, and it's going to be a, not a one off, but it's going to be custom, and it's going to be everything that it's supposed to be for an extra fifteen hundred bucks, basically. Um, but if you factor in those, even those 377 hours, I mean, I'm really bad at mental math, but if you factor in all the money that I spent and stuff, and then you take it and divide it by those 377 hours, I'm making somewhere along the lines of two, three dollars an hour. Right. So it's, it's the artist that's the conundrum thing where, uh, it's, it's the same thing photographers struggle with videographers struggle with anybody who paints any of that stuff. Like where what what is the value of something that not everybody can do and and so on and so forth and so exactly I, I, it just it's it's just one of those things that always um you're curious about when you're on the other end and you're looking at purchasing something like that you go well where did they come up with that figure and so it's nice to hear like there is thought process you're not just like 10 grand that's what it's going to be it's 10 grand like you, you you took time and you thought and you you definitely yeah you know, Put effort yeah. into the I, I don't I don't throw out a price because like you, you don't want to seem like you're taking advantage of the person but at the same time too you don't want to basically work for free you know because at exactly. the end of the day I got to keep the lights on so <laughs> absolutely and 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 at the end of the day you are selling it and that's what you do um okay do you do a lot of build for others builds for others or do you primarily do it for yourself so I do a lot of builds for others. In the first year of my business, I did do a lot for myself. Uh, that truck, that particular truck was one of 13 major builds, uh, 300 plus hour builds that I did in one year. And that That's was good. like my drive of saying, I need to get out there. I need people to see what I'm capable of so that when I say, hey, I can build that for you. They're like, what do you got to show me? And I got a whole repertoire of stuff that I can say, look, this is what I can do and get that business in. Now we're probably doing five to seven major builds because I'm also, you know, handling 20 printers and, you know, me and Gio are bagging and tagging and, and yep. doing all, and I'm doing paperwork that I hate doing and all this other stuff. So it, I don't have as much time as I used to, but uh, I am doing primarily for everybody else now. I barely have any more time to do work for me, even though I'm trying to squeeze in one or two here and there, but it's hard. Understandably, um, there, there are so many things fighting for your time all at the same, all at the same time. And so in doing that, it, it makes it hard to, to build things for yourself, especially if you're trying to promote and grow what you're doing um, in the business side of it. Uh, okay, so one of the things that we talked about when we were talking at East Coast, well, and it really stuck with me, is you stated that you you don't sell the first of anything. And so does that reign true, like, with everything, or does that reign true with, like, the big stuff? Unfortunately, yes, it reigns true with everything. I literally am a hoarder of my own product. I will not sell the first of anything that I make custom production, whatever it is. Um, I mean, I'd really have to be in like dire need of, of money, I guess, to sell these things because they just, it's almost like I equate it to almost like selling your child, you know, you raised it. And then it's like, well, here you go, 20 bucks. You can have this kid that I spent all this money and time on, <laughs> you know? So no, I, I keep, I generally keep, I probably have about a good 90 to 95% of one of everything that I've made. All right. Like, I, I was just curious because, I mean, you have everything from the tiniest little scale item to these huge trucks. I was just, I was curious if it like was across the board or if it was like only on the big stuff. So interesting. Nah, it's everything. Um, so, the, so the next question I'm actually really partial to. And so there, there's two reasons I'm really partial to it. One, it's a phenomenal question. And two, this question came actually from my father directed at me when I did like my own self like uh talk about why i do what i do all that stuff and so his question is what is the dream like your dream build and can you break it down by the components like chassis wheels tires electronics whatever it's a hard question so i think for this question we should put it together with your last question 
and I'll answer both simultaneously. So you want me to bump it to the end? No, nope, we'll skip this question till the end. Perfect. That works for me. All right. What is one thing you will never leave off of a scale build? Myself. <laughs> okay. A scale, scale drive. Listen, ever since I got into scanning and doing figures, as a kid, it was like you always want your own action figure. And now that I'm able to do it, it's like oh, I have to have a driver. My guy's got to be in there. I have to be in there driving. And, like, pending on the truck, it'll be, like, happy me or angry me or just monotone me. But it's got to be a driver. Um, yeah, a, a driver. Oh, a driver and a nice, a good set of wheels. I think wheels makes or breaks a vehicle, honestly, in real life and in RC. I, I could not agree with you more. I, if my wife was watching right now and like, or sitting right here, she'd be like, man, someone else agrees with you. I'll be like, man, look at the <laughs> wheels on that car. That's hideous. And she goes, oh, yep. whatever. No, wheels make or break a vehicle, period, hands down. You have to think when you select wheels. Um, you can't just buy any wheel to fit any vehicle. They have to fit. And, and there's no way to define that. It's a, it's a look that people are going for. So yep. anyway, back to what we're talking about. Um, are you a Facebook fan or a forums fan? And why one over the other? So I'd like to say I like them both. Um, and no, it's not because I know you, Maddie Kett. I love Maddie Kett, what he does for the hobby. Super <laughs> awesome guy. Um, so I love the forum because when I started really pushing this as a business, I did research upon research. I've read posts after posts, hundreds, if not thousands of pages of information and what he's using, what he did, his technique, her technique. And just, it's like an encyclopedia. I love that, that you can go back to it and it's still there. It's kind of like your own personal collection of stuff. Um, but, right. and this is a big but, I hate, and now I don't know if it's the same now because I haven't been on a forum in well over a year. I'm sorry, Maddie Cat, I've been trying. But <laughs> I hated the fact that I had to take a picture, upload it in the photo bucket, then take a link, copy and paste it here. And like, it was this whole big nightmare that I'm just like, ah, oh, I, I can't, I can't do this. And then when Facebook came up and it was like, oh, upload. And you're like, this is amazing. So I love Facebook for the speed and, you know, getting people right away real quick. But I love the forum for the information and being able to go back and it's still there and you're not trying to search it uh, forever because it's 10,000 posts down somebody's, you know, live post or whatever the case may be. So it's a love hate between both. Um, the one thing I do, there is a big butt with Facebook is unfortunately, I hate all the trolls. There's a lot of just spam and, you know, BS that shouldn't be on there. And it's kind of makes it frustrating. Yep. Um, so it's a love hate between the both. I am going to try to go more onto the forums again, because I, I do miss it. But Ease goes to Facebook, information and just search and knowledge goes to the forums. Awesome. Yeah, so I'm going to refer to some of the comments that are going on right now only because um, I just want to re up what I had said earlier. Unfortunately, Facebook does not like when you like my live feeds. Um, and so I, I'm not hating on you guys. I love that you the support. I wish you I wish you could just keep mashing the like button all the way through but it freezes me. Um, and so it'll like boot us out, which is super annoying and it, it just ruins the feed. So comment, show us your love in the comments, but unfortunately Facebook does not like the likes. I, I don't know why. They definitely, they, they should fix that. Like really, like Facebook. It's using, I know. It's using too much free data. That's what it's doing. I, I guess, I guess, I don't know, but. All those likes in there, man, Facebook should fix that because it, it, it totally um, dulls things down. I love all seeing that all pop up the side, but it, it definitely slows things down. All right. 
So here, I'm going to pose this to you, but I'm going to pose this to all the people out there that are watching as well, because I want to fire up some chat going on over there on the side. Um, what is the best piece of advice that you can give to a scale newbie, someone who's brand new? Or if you're like brand new and somehow you've made it into here and you're watching all of this, thank you, by the way. Um, but what is the best piece of advice you've had given to you? So what is the best piece you can give? Um, don't be afraid to do research and ask questions because unfortunately there will be people that are going to be sarcastic and, and say things they shouldn't say. But for the most part, the community itself has way more better people than worse people to answer questions and research forums, uh, Google, um, I mean, Research, research, research when you're getting into builds, when you're doing stuff. Ask opinions, ask questions, get on these Facebook groups. I mean, you can think of any type of vehicle from Vanquish to <laughs> Traxxas to whatever that has a, a page. There's a group page that some fan decided to make, and now there's like 10,000 members, and you literally ask a question, and you're going to get 90% of the time legit answers like, hey, I've used that product aftermarket. It sucks go to this company or use this part and it'll help you make a decision because speaking for myself, I hate having to buy things three, four times. I want to be one and done and that's it. So if I can get information from people that'll help me make that decision, it's that much better. Don't be afraid to ask questions. That's probably the best advice I can give and do research. Lots of it. Awesome. That's great advice, man. Um, so I'm going to sidebar this conversation for a second. And I'm going to go to one of the questions that keeps popping up. And I could not figure out what they meant until I remembered seeing it at East Coast. And I can see it sticking in there over your head. Someone keeps saying motor stand, motor stand, motor stand. And so I see all the motors sitting on that giant rack. Can you pick it up and bring it this way? I, I, that's got to be what they mean. And it totally is worth seeing. So... So this is what I was welding up was my little heavy duty metal stand for all of my scale motors with the grating. I have that's this good. one and then I have the one right there that's holding up. I got 16 motors here, 16 out of uh, 22 that I offer and uh, seven more to come <laughs> all right so okay so now's where things get tougher because i'm gonna ask you where your inspiration comes from inside of the hobby who are your influences in the scale crawling segment of our hobby and if you had to pick someone who you feel would be a good candidate for this show who would it be and why Ah, uh, that's, 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 uh, that's always a super loaded question. It's funny because I thought about it for like some hours, maybe a day or two, and I still couldn't yeah. come up with that specific answer. I can tell you, um, there's a lot of people in the 14th scale community from the forums that do super amazing, skilled, labor intensive work, um, in the crawler side. Uh, Scott Lampert is definitely on my the top of my list. Um, I mean, I look at him and, you know, I mean, he's pretty much young enough to be my father. And uh, sorry, Scott. And um, he's doing build after build after build. And I'm like, this man's got a wife. It's like 18 and a half dogs. You know, he's got grandkids, kids. Where does he find the time to do this? I do this for a living and I don't have time to do all these awesome builds and stuff so much so that I have in the past uh, commissioned Scott to do um, start builds for me because it's like I've gotten to that point where I can prove that I can build. But what I can't do is stop time. I don't have that time. So if Scott, you got some time to start this build for me and then I can finish it, then that's what I'll do. And this is my favorite crawler to date. This is my custom power wagon, hard body. Body was built and started by Scott. 
Um, I got it back, and then I refined it. I, I did all the, the line work on the, uh, you know, all of this line work here on the doors. I did mm -hmm. all the little accessories, the hinges, stuff like that, the grill. I built the chassis, built everything from scratch. Um, full interior, me. <laughs> Um, cause you can't not have me in there. Um, and I got yelled at by a lot of people for driving it and like beating the crap out of it. And as you can see, it still has ECSC dirt on it because yeah. it just looks cooler when you use it. And, um, this was definitely one of my more fun super builds. This build actually went with me overseas to Taiwan, to Hong Kong. It's been to Portugal. Um, it's been all over the U S um, got the Bauhaus axles in it. Um, so they make awesome stuff, super narrow axles. This is actually the body's closer to being, I want to say like 11th, 12th scale. So everything's kind of a little yeah. smaller, more compact, like a short wheelbase. But, um, Scott's definitely a huge like influence because, you know, he just keeps at it and keeps putting out these awesome builds and he kind of just goes with the flow you know today he's doing a rat rod tomorrow he's doing a semi truck the next day who knows you know um super awesome guy down to earth does awesome stuff i've seen you know new faces uh wes you had him on the show he like came yeah. out of the blue you know he decided to start doing it and he does an awesome job uh donnie Absolutely. donnie's doing some awesome stuff donnie's cheating though because he's doing a Mopar right now. And everybody knows that I have this weak part for Mopars. So he's got my attention. Like, that's cheating. You can't do the Dodges because I'm going to be stuck to that. Um, yeah. Who else? Uh, you know, I mean, Matty Kett, you know, he does some awesome scratch build stuff. You know, he's done some cool stuff. Um, uh, man, I'm, I'm drawing blanks here. There's so many people in the crawler community that are doing – their own twist to stuff, and it's not necessarily yeah. like a full custom or a full scratch, but just that little footprint or that little fingerprint of what they are into that truck makes it. It, it just it makes it something else. And you know, I, I sometimes I, I get distracted or I just sit behind my computer and I'm like, oh, I'm tired. I don't know what to do. And then I see a post and I'm like, Oh wow, this guy's building this truck. And now the fuel's going, the fire's burning. I'm like, okay, I'm ready to go another four hours and now I gotta build this. You know? Even though I never get started with my own stuff, but still, the thoughts there. <laughs> That's like me, man. I've been I've been harboring projects. They just show up and like hang out. Like right over here, there's this huge Jesse James coop that I took everything apart. I just haven't done anything with it sitting there. Um but, so but you you also have people that don't do builds per se or scratch builds that are also very big influences in the hobby in general. Like uh, uh, you got Steve Martin, like what he's doing with trying to get everybody together on the same yeah. website, on the same page with shows and events so that it's like, okay, I know where I can go next week or where I can't go. Um, you know, the people doing the pages, the forums, hobby shop owners. I mean, we're losing hobby shops left and right. So to find a good hobby shop and still have it and still have these people that actually care about you as a customer walking in and saying, Hey man, uh, I want to buy this part. Sure. Like, you know, yeah, you might pay a few dollars more, but listen, at the end of the day, they're doing us a service by being there and saying, Hey, there's somewhere you can walk in versus click a button on Amazon and have it tomorrow type of deal. Yeah. Um, you just can't get that from online. So there's a lot of behind the scenes people, you know, engineering departments, people that are designing stuff, people that are making these awesome rigs um, a reality. Like, they don't get enough credit, I don't, I, I believe. So, like, they get a lot of that, you know, credit for me. Like, I know a lot of these people on the inside, and, like, the stuff they do is awesome. And they're super humble because you don't see them out there saying, hey, I designed this or I did that for this person. So they got to right. get some credit, too. Absolutely. Uh, so I have to ask you the hardest question ever. So you thought that one was hard. Wait till you hear this one. What is your favorite build out there that is not your own? And it's hard because there's so many amazing builds, but everybody always has a soft spot for one. Um, this is an easy question. Oh, and I'm going to hit heck? you with I'm an answer. I'm, 
I'm going to hit you with an answer you're not expecting. My favorite build, because technically it is a build, it's hard for me to pick a vehicle, whether it be from Scott or this person or that person or whoever's building, but my favorite build, because right. technically it was built with two hands, is Smidgen's gotcha. Folly. Uh, hey, I'll give it to you. I freaking love it, and it's so small. Um, so that's did the, that's the craziest job, part. Like designed so intelligently, so that when he films or when he takes pictures, like it looks like you're immersed in this huge world, and it's it's really not. I don't know the exact size, but um, like it would fit in my living room. Like it's not big. Yeah. Yep. So it, it's awesome. Crazy. I will give that to you. That's a great answer for that because it's not a it's not a truck, but it's still what exactly what embodies all the stuff we're doing, um, because they they took something they think is cool and they built it and and it totally is related to all of the stuff we're got we've got going on. That's a great answer. All right. So where do you see the scale crawling community heading in the coming years? It's only going to get bigger. And better. Um, when I got on, I was pushing scale hardcore, and I still am to this day. Um, and from day one of my business until now, it's grown astronomically to the point that if you can't afford something, you get the courage to go and actually build it or make it from scratch. So I feel like it's actually bringing out all the creativity in these people, even if it's like making a jerry can or a cardboard box, like just being super creative. It's getting more and more and more scale. And you can see it now more so than ever with, you know, the builds, the build qualities, the accessories on the builds, whether they be purchased or scratch built. Um, I don't think scale is going to go away ever. It's I think it's kind of like a, a collector's item. It's either going to stay where it's at or it's going to just become more valuable. And I don't think it's ever going to stop, honestly. I think it's just going to keep growing and growing. Awesome, man. I, I see it going up, too. Um, I, I really like that it's easier for people to get in. I like that there are more options for people who are beginning. Um, and I really like that there are more options out there for events as well. Um, I, like when I started, you either went to a Sorka comp or you ran your truck in the woods. Like it wasn't like there weren't a bunch of options. And so now it's kind of like everybody has their own area where they can thrive and enjoy the hobby and what's going on. Um, so, so I agree with you. I see it going in a positive way for sure. All right. So now I have to ask you about team drivers because the team driver thing is always a hot button conversation. It's always a, a, a topic of interest. And so when I talk to people who are um, on the could you be a team driver aspect side of things, I try to tailor my question to that. Do you drive for anybody? Why do you select them? But because I know you have team drivers, I want to know what you look for in a team driver and why you're selecting those people. So my number one, I mean, my list is pretty intense, I guess you can say. But my number one yeah. character trait that I look for in a team driver is loyalty. And I'm super old school, you know, honest, like up front, um, loyal as they come, give the shirt off my back to you type of deal. And I expect my drivers to have that same drive to the brand, to themselves, to the community. Um just be on be an honest person, be helpful. Um, can't tell you how many times I get contacted by people saying, hey, man, I love your products. I'd love to be a team driver. And I'm like, cool, I appreciate it. Uh, what's your favorite product? Well, I don't have any yet, but, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> I see where this is going. Um, and the reason I bring up the word loyalty is because If you set the bar at a certain standard for what you want in life from a, uh, a driver position or as a team driver, I feel that you shouldn't 
accept anything else. And what I mean by that is if you want to be a team driver really, really bad for company A, but they tell you, you know what, right now it's full or we're not taking any in, don't just jump to company B or company C or D because company A said no to you because then what you're ultimately doing is you're not showing that loyalty. You're kind of just looking for that deal. And with my guys, um, girls, guys, doesn't matter. Um, it's not about the discount or the money. It's about the loyalty and the friendship and the camaraderie. And I call them all family members, every single one of them, because there's not one team driver that's on my team that I haven't met or spoken to personally. So unless you're on the other side of the country or the world, you want to be a team driver, you're going to have to meet me in person. I got to talk to you, shake your hand, give you a hug, um, and just talk RC and see where your head is really at. Because I'm not looking for somebody who is going to just want, you know, X amount of percent off, do a few posts and keep it moving. I want someone that actually wants to be a part of the life through good, through bad, um, with the business, without the business, like God forbid, but if I close the doors tomorrow, I want to know that these yeah. guys are still going to call me and say, Hey bro, how's life? You know, how's the wife? How's whatever I'm into at the time? You know, that's, that's what I'm looking for. And I think that's what a lot of, you know, the teams that I represent are, are um, looking for. Obviously I drive for Pitbull. I do a lot more than just that, but I drive for Pitbull for Castle, um, Bauhaus. Um, I represent Reefs RC as well. Because he makes some super awesome um, servos, which, you know, I'm super uh, stoked by. Um, A-Main, they do a lot of sponsoring. Um, they hook me up with stuff to get more products done for customers. Um, and then there's a lot of other companies that I don't, I'm not sponsored by. But right. I'm so cool with the owners and just the people that I've spoken to that they're always ready and willing to reach out and give me a hand. Um I think this guy that you may know, he goes by the name of uh, Matt Ottman, maybe, ring a bell. It so, does, weirdly enough, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so, super cool guy. Um, I've talked to him numerous times. I never got the pleasure of meeting him in person, but I spoke to him right before ECSD, and I said, man, I just saw your post about those hero drive shafts. Um. I've broken every drive shaft on the market. MIP, June Fact, uh, you name it. I've broken it. Um, I'd like to get some of these off you. If I can get them for ECSC, that would be awesome because I'd really like to put a hurting on them. And, dude, if they hold up, you got my business. I will buy them. Let me know what I owe you. So, sure enough, he sends me out two sets that's actually on the pit bully right here. Mm-hmm. Sends them to me to ECSC, doesn't charge me a dime, says, knock yourself out. Let me know how they work out for you. I beat the crap out of these on purpose. Like, I found every sharp rock I could and just plowing into things. And I'm like, I think I found my drive shaft. I'm like, Matt, we got to work something out. I got to sell these. Anything I use, I want to be able to offer to my customers because I like offering top quality stuff. Um, and I got to use it. I got to, you know. Uh, I do a lot of work with, with Mike Kirby at um, at K and K. Ninety nine point nine percent of all my hardware comes from him. Um, I was sponsored by him and some other companies too, but I kind of let that sponsorship thing go because I've known Mike since he started his business, and we've always worked close together. And I said, you know what? Give the sponsorship title to someone that can carry all the the necessities for that. I'm still going to push your brand. I'm still going to use your product and tell everyone about it. But I also run a business, too, so it's really hard for me to do X amount of posts a week or a day or whatever it is that a team driver needs to do for him or for anyone else. So certain right. companies I represent, I'm not a driver, but it's you might as well. It's kind of like the same thing without the title because I really don't care for the title. I just like supporting the brands that support me and that work for me and that I can tell my customers about. Right. And see, I like the last statement right there that it's I want to support the brands that support me and work for me. And I think that that's where like the, the back and forth of team driver stuff gets a bad rap. And 
Um, and, and if you have that mentality, if you are a team driver or not a team driver, whatever it is, whatever stance you're taking on it, um, that's, that's where it needs to be. Support the people who support you and the products that you like and let the chips fall where they may. That's always been my yep. motto. That's what I attempt to do. So, all right, man, we are at the end and I have to ask what I should expect to see next from you, but I also have to tie it back into that question that we skipped, which was like, what is your dream build? So, so my dream build, it's a two part question. First part is to make my own version of Smidgen's Folly because I have the knowledge, the know how, I know how I want to do it. It's all in my head. I have no space. That's my problem. If I had a big enough yard or my space, I would make a killer, you know, course where I would have people come out all the time and it would just be super awesome. But I can't, right. so until then, it's just going to sit in my head. The other dream build, everyone knows that I have an affliction for the Dodge Power Wagon. So I've currently acquired a real 46 Power Wagon cab, a uh, front end, that I am going to build to look like my pit bully, because I literally, my dream build was that pit bully, the way it's designed. Stacks in the back, the whole nine, six BT Cummins, the whole, you know, everything. But what I wanted to do, and what you can expect to see from me, which ties it all together, is yeah. I am currently building a 1946 Dodge Power Wagon, Castle Powered, Vanquish Axles, Custom wheels, Rock Beast tires, um, K and K hardware, Reef servo. Um, trying to think what other components I have on there or will have on there. Um, and I'm gonna build this thing to look like I literally went and picked it up from somebody's backyard, and then like the door might have been kind of rusted, so I went and got another door from another one. Kind of like it's got rust and it's beat to crap, but it's like restored and driving kind of deal. Right. The I only gotcha. thing is, the only thing is, hashtag this, guys, size matters and bigger is better. So without any further ado, I introduce the 1946. Let me get back up for this. One-fifth scale Dodge Power Wagon. This thing is a 24 and a half inch wheelbase. As you can see, I started doing some, uh, you know, dings and dents. This thing took well over 250 print hours. It was printed in pieces. It's about three and a half feet long. It'll be using the yeah. Rock Beast 7.3 uh, inch tall um, 40 series tire because that's the only one that looks scale enough to fit under there. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to start offering bodies or uh, kits, I would say, pieces um, for the guy that wants to build a massive build because you can – pretty much build this massive rig for about the same price that you would build a fully built 10 scale. So I'm going to guesstimate and say that I'll probably be into this thing anywhere from 15 to two grand, 1500 to two grand. But if you think about it nowadays, you buy a vanquish for 900 bucks, you throw in electronics, you're 1500 bucks deep right there, you know, but yep, that quick, double your sure. money, double your size. So you get more bang for the buck. And any to me, bigger is better. I bought the Traxxas UDR because of its size. If they had made that in a 10 scale, I probably wouldn't have bought it. So right. I'm doing this, and I'm going to be doing a plethora of other um, massive builds because I have some of my guys that are getting into it as well. And I'm going to start offering parts, you know, like chassis, uh, part-specific stuff, and I'm going to do a, a, a how-to so... You know, this is more dedicated for the builder or the guys that are guys and girls that are not afraid to actually do 
um, some body work, some filling, some gluing, some customizing, because I'm starting to see that more and more people are getting into the customizing, but now you can actually make your own really big one, paint it how you want, rust it how you want, um, do it however you pretty much want, and uh, you don't have that restriction of this is too small for me to do this, because I mean, like, I can wear this on my head. Like, this thing is huge. Yeah. It's, it's literally 14 inches wide. So I'm sitting down, and this is touching the floor right now, and it's, like, up to my chest. That's so, crazy. What, and, and also, going back on inspirations, you know, what you're doing is definitely an, an inspiration because, you know, you're, you're giving people something to view. You're, you're giving people this, this safe knowledge, let's say, from different point of views from different people all over the world. And that pretty much inspired me to do my own live feed either Tuesday or Wednesday, one of those days, maybe even Monday, because Mondays are usually slow for everybody, um, yeah. where I'm actually going to build this rig on a weekly basis with people live and get their input and kind of have my viewers be a part of the build yeah. while doing a tutorial showing them, hey, this is one way to rust. This is one way to glue. This is one way to sand, wet sand, paint, and kind of give people that how-to and help them do their own thing in the hobby because we need more of the do it yourselves and more of the creativity just coming out. Right. And so you had said something to me about that the other night when we did our little test uh, feed to make sure stuff was working out. Um, and it, I've been thinking about it ever since. And it's such a cool idea to be able to talk about like the weathering and uh, how you build something or why you're choosing the glue you're using and stuff like that in a live setting where people can ask questions like, we have some tremendous videos out there of people who have put that info out um, and, and done some great stuff. And it's all over on YouTube and you can find it. And it's, it's amazing. There are people who are still kicking out all that tremendous stuff, but you, you miss some of that interaction. Like when I watch those videos, I'm like, well, man, like how this happened or why this over this. And so it'd be helpful to have the opportunity to ask the question to kind of, be a part of what's going on there so i can see i can see how that would be beneficial um and also the other thing that people need to keep in mind is there are various learning styles for various different peoples and so as i'm a teacher like i'm very in tune with that and so a live feed where you can ask questions is going to tailor to a certain individual where a just video where you can kind of do your own thing is going to tailor to others so yeah, absolutely. And and blame we'll blame Blazer for this because he keeps bringing around that huge uh, record. And uh, I'm like, I got to have a big one, too. And um, actually, at ECSC, another thing that tipped the iceberg over, and I know you saw it, one of the guys from um, Super Shaft, he was selling yeah. that huge Jeep. And I was like, oh, man, I want to buy it, but it's a Jeep. It's got to be a Dodge. So... <laughs> I was it's here now. and if I'd have had the money in my pocket that day, I, it would have come home with me. It's one of those, like... It was an awesome build. You've seen, like, you've never seen this thing before. You know you can't just go out and have it anytime you want. Like, you should buy it now kind of deals. And I didn't have the money to do it. Otherwise, it would have been, it would be sitting here. You'd be holding up your power wagon. I'd be like, hey, I bought this Jeep. Yeah. So, so it's on my lap now. <laughs> yeah, that's gigantic. That's awesome. So yeah. it's three D. It's three D printed, right? Yep, three D printed PLA. It's about eight millimeter, eight eight and a half millimeter thick. So it's pretty sturdy stuff. Um, I'm also going to do cool little competitions and giveaways throughout the build. Like one of them, and I can give people a heads up now that are watching. Thank you guys, by the way. Is the person to get closest to the weight of this body will get a nice special giveaway. <laughs> Awesome. All right, man. Well, unless you've got something else that you need to say or that I missed something, um, I'm going to kind of close things up and, and thank you for being on. It, it was a great time. I enjoy, I thoroughly enjoyed the conversation without a doubt. Um, uh, I can't wait to see how Absolutely. that turns out. I can't wait to follow some of the live video stuff and what's going on there either. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, no, I think aside from that and just the whole plethora of new scale goodies that I'm going to be coming out with, 
Also, um, my condolences for anyone that has lost a loved one to any kind of cancer, breast cancer, ovarian cancer. Uh, the whole cancer season's coming up, and we are going to be doing special um, pink, and um, we're going to be doing some special pink giveaway um, giveaways and also selling items like toolboxes, jerry cans, stuff like that, and all the proceeds are going to go to um, cancer research and stuff, so we're going to be doing that this year. I've been wanting to do that every year, but I always get slammed at work and having to travel, but we, we planned it early, so we're going to be putting that stuff out soon. We're going to be doing the, uh, the Toys for Tots. We plan on actually going to the Children's Hospital with one of my semi-trucks, hauling a bunch of gifts for the kids and stuff, so that's something to look yeah. forward to. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Uh, I feel like people are guessing the weight of your body over here. I think they're going to have to tune into your, your show you're going to do to, to take the advantage of that. I've got all kinds of numbers popping up. So, Yep. Yep. Nobody hit the mark, though, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We're good. Okay, man. Well, thank you for being on. I had a blast talking to you. Um, I, I know My I love ECSC Inspired. It's, it's always great to talk to someone else who has – that drive and that passion and like the energy from our conversation at ECSC like left me feeling like I had to come back and build some stuff. And so that's what it's all about for Absolutely. me across the board. Uh, and, and I thank you for taking the time to do the show and uh, I'll be talking to you in the future, man. Absolutely. I appreciate it. And thanks for having me. And I'm glad I can inspire somebody to build some stuff. That's what we need to do more of in the hobby. All right. Well, Mr. Dan Wilson is uh, pausing us here with all his likes. <laughs> so. <laughs> all right. Have a good night, man. All right, well, it's looking like we're ending. So I'm going to let you go, Brian, and I'll finish things out and close the show. But thank you for being on. Uh, it was a pleasure, and I'll be talking to you in the future. Absolutely, man. Take care. All right. All right. Okay. See ya. Maybe. Come on. All right, there we go. Okay, so big thanks to Brian for being on. I had a blast talking. Um, uh, it was great after the week off to have a nice uh, sit-down conversation with someone else in our hobby who is doing um, an amazing uh, job pro um, with the scale aspect of what's going on. Uh, thank each and every one of you for tuning in. Uh, I genuinely appreciate everything that you do when you tune in. Um, a weekly basis, I see a lot of the same names over and over again, and don't think, guys, that I don't see it. I'm going to close this thing out. I'm going to go back, answer some comments, um, see if I can't answer some questions. I saw some stuff pop up, but there was a lot of stuff going on uh, as far as comments went, and I couldn't uh, honestly address them. Um, and keep up with what we were doing in our conversation. So as always, I got to kind of uh, shout out my stuff here for a second. Follow me on uh, Instagram at VanWard underscore Customs. Follow me on uh, YouTube at VanWard Customs. I haven't been pumping much out there, but it will come, I promise. Um, follow me at VanWard Customs for Facebook and uh, the business page over there on Facebook. And check out the website. Um, as always, thank you guys for tuning in, and if it wasn't for all of you, it would just be me talking to a camera, and that's super boring. No one wants to watch that, and you guys are the reason that I do what I do. Until next week, I will see you all then. Thanks. Good night.